You've long been asking me to analyze the middle blocker as we rarely touch upon this position, so those who have been waiting for this a like in advance from you, because this episode definitely deserves your attention. Today in the Play Like a Pro segment, our main character is the legendary middle blocker of the Brazilian national team, and indeed the entire world of volleyball, a man who has been fighting for his country in international competitions for 20 years. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Lucas. As usual, we will talk about the most interesting biographical facts and undoubtedly analyze the technical aspects of this athlete. So without further ado, let's go. Lucas was born on March 6th, 1986 in the city of Colinas, which of course is in Brazil. Unfortunately, due to the fact that this volleyball player spent almost his entire career in Brazil, I managed to gather little biographical information about this, I won't hesitate to say, great athlete. But it was extremely challenging. So, before we delve into the technical analysis, let me tell you some interesting and entertaining facts about the middle blocker of the Brazilian national team. Nat Actually, let's start with the story of how he got into this sport. His father was a football player, so it's obvious that our hero's first steps were in that direction. Dad insisted not only on Lucas kicking the ball, so in choosing the type of activity, he did not limit him. The important thing was for his heir to engage in sports. The young athlete developed a passion for ball sports, including football, mini football, basketball, handball, and eventually volleyball. An interesting fact is that if it weren't for certain circumstances, we might never have seen Lucas on the volleyball courts, and I wouldn't be making this video now, but since you're watching it, there must be reasons for that. And as is often the case, the financial aspect decided everything. The young Brazilian loved basketball immensely and planned to make his professional career in this sport. By throwing the ball into the basket, the athlete received a scholarship. However, the club lost sponsors and the need for a scholarship did not disappear. Therefore, an alternative had to be found. There were only two options, athletics or volleyball. Initially, the 15-year-old boy engaged in both, but, as you understand, later he chose volleyball exclusively. This brings us back to the question of when you should start playing volleyball to succeed in this sport. So, if you haven't started playing volleyball at the age of 6, it doesn't mean you can't dedicate your entire life to it. Despite starting his volleyball career late, at this moment Lucas cannot imagine how he would have managed without this sport. Volleyball may not seem as interesting if you don't play it. Understanding all the technical nuances, studying strategies, love for it only grows. The dynamics of changes in volleyball are also impressive. Perhaps no mass sport has transformed as much in recent years as volleyball. Rules change, the pace of the game invariably increases, and if a decade ago a tall player could only occupy the position of a middle blocker. Now, 2 meter volleyball players have learned to handle the ball well in reception, set and perform many other challenging technical things that seemed inaccessible to them before. Despite his love for volleyball, Lucas still has other sports hobbies. For example, the middle blocker loves to ride a bicycle, which he often does on weekends. At the moment, his longest trip has exceeded 80 kilometers, which, you must agree, is quite impressive, especially for a person over 2 meters tall. We will return to the hobbies and peculiarities of this volleyball player a little later. For now, let's talk about his professional career. For most fans in Europe and Asia, Lucas is known mainly for his performances for the Brazilian national team. So, deviating from the usual scenarios, let's first talk about the national team and then move on to the club. Getting into the national team is the pinnacle of the career for any Brazilian volleyball player. Coming to play for the national team, you simply must burn with the idea of giving everything for your team and your country. Otherwise, you will remain outside this collective. With all the goals and motivations, conflicts and misunderstandings in the Brazilian national team are excluded because everyone understands perfectly why they are here. Lucas was called up for the national team just one year after starting his volleyball career, which sounds incredibly cool. Of course, for the player, it was a complete surprise, but far more unexpected for him was getting into the adult national team, where he was invited after the Junior World Championship in 2005 by the legendary Brazilian specialist Bernardinho. 
It was under the guidance of this legendary coach that the middle blocker appreciated the importance of weight training and overall physical conditioning to enable the body to cope with the extraordinary demands placed on a professional athlete. So, I'll reiterate once again, don't be afraid to work with weights. With the right approach, it will not only make you slower, less agile or prone to injury. On the contrary, it will help you reach a new level of volleyball performance and extend your playing career or simply allow you to enjoy your favorite sport longer if you're an amateur volleyball player. One of the sensible and justified methods is to choose a load similar to the game's activity. For example, during training Lucas could perform up to 150 jumps at maximum power to ensure his jump endurance for a full 5 set match. And if you're not aware, middle blockers jump more than anyone else on the volleyball court, especially when it comes to powerful jumps. Because if you look at setters, they don't always need to jump to the maximum to deliver a quality set to their attacking players. And, for almost 20 years, the legend of Brazilian volleyball has been defending the colors of his national team. As you can imagine, the list of accolades is extensive. Among them are six victories at the South American Championships, three golds in the World League, and the World Cup of Champions each. These tournaments haven't been held since 2017. Also in the collection are gold medals from the World Championship, Volleyball Nations League, and, of course, the gold from the Home Olympics in Rio in 2016 which was crucial for Brazil after the disappointing defeat to the Russian team in 2012 in London. But despite the significance of the Olympic medal, the most memorable for Lucas is his first championship as a starting player for the Brazilian national team. The middle blocker achieved this in Belgrade during the final match of the World League in 2009. In a tough confrontation amidst a massive crowd of Serbian fans numbering around 20,000 people, despite not only the roar of the stands but also objects thrown at the visiting team, Brazil still secured victory with a score of 2.3. This is the most memorable moment in Lucas' career to date. Returning to the importance of the Olympics, I'll note that just for this event in 2015, he went to Italy where he joined forces with Bruno in preparation for the home tournament. The middle blocker spent only one season in this club, managing to win all internal Italian trophies. However, as it often happened in the history of Modena, financial problems arose, leading to changes in the lineup, so Lucas returned to Brazil. If we exclude this trip to Italy, the player spent his entire career in the domestic championship, playing for eight different clubs and winning seven Brazilian championship titles, as well as several other trophies. Before we move on to the analysis of Lucas's game, let me tell you a few more interesting facts about this volleyball player. One of his legs is longer than the other, which required him to wear a corrective brace in childhood to address knee issues. He also loves to cook. For him, it's a way to relax and relieve stress. Just don't include onions as Lucas dislikes them in any form. The young volleyball player's mother even disguised it in various dishes so that her son would eat it, but if he found out about its presence, he never touched that dish again. If you ever cook for this legendary volleyball player, besides onions, never hide tuna and olives in the food, as it can cause serious allergic reactions. Lucas is very meticulous when it comes to time management and it can genuinely annoy him if something starts deviating from the schedule, especially when it comes to sports and business meetings. So, as you can understand, the player is far from perfect calmness, because during flights things often don't go as planned. And finally, I'll introduce you to the dream team of the best players in the world, as seen by this volleyball player. For the outside hitter positions, he chose Jiba and Murillo. The setter position in this team went to Ricardo. In his opinion, this player transformed the modern understanding of the setter's game. A faster pace, in-depth analysis and understanding of the game's rhythm. The libero position was obviously Sergio. After all, he is the libero who repeatedly became the MVP of international tournaments, including the triumphant Olympic Games in 2016. The middle blockers were Gustavo and, unexpectedly, the only foreign player in this Brazilian dream team, Dmitry Muzerski. Thus, Lucas paid tribute to him for the legendary match in the final of the Olympics in London in 2012. But with a hint of bitterness, as an alternative to the Russian, he suggested Simone. 
closing this parade of stars is Leandro Visotto. Although I was sure that Lucas would prefer Wallace for the opposite position with whom he fought for the national team almost his entire career. Now it's time to move on to the analytical part where we will delve into the technical aspects of Lucas and identify trends and playing behavior of the middle blocker of the Brazilian national team when we talk about Lucas and his attack, his trademark move behind the setter's head comes to mind which is more commonly used in women's volleyball rather than in the men's version of the sport. Perhaps this maneuver works extremely effectively because not many are prepared for it as it's not commonly practiced in training where most volleyball skills are honed. However, this combination is used quite rarely in actual play. Let's now explore how and under what conditions the middle blocker of the Brazilian national team attacks. The most optimal option is to analyze Lucas's attacking tendencies based on his position in the lineup. This primarily influences the ordered combinations and the behavior of the middle blocker in offense. Considering that Libros replaced middle blockers on the back line, there are only three playing positions, although after Lucas's serve, he might execute a pipe attack. Let's start with the exit from the fourth zone. The most popular option here is a combination where the middle blocker tries to be about 2 meters away from the setter. Of course there are other variations, but I'm telling you about the main pattern now. In most of these combinations, Lucas prefers to attack in a forward direction, predominantly in the area of the fifth zone. Next in line is the lineup where Lucas is positioned in the third zone. As practice shows, in such situations, Lucas doesn't attack as often after the reception. It's more common after a successful defense. After a block, the player finds himself in the center of the net, making it more convenient for him to attack from there. In these combinations, he is often close to the setter, and whether the Brazilian will attack in front of the setter or behind his head depends on the setter's position. If we look at the most frequently used attack zones in Lucas's prime years, he wasn't very selective and often aimed for a quick attack over the block. He wasn't afraid to do this even against Dmitry Musirski. The most used lineup for the attack of the central blocker of the Brazilian national team remains the exit from the second zone. And here, there are two obvious options. Attacking behind the setter's head, which is usually the most common for Lucas, and attacking in front of the setter. Regardless of the setter's position, he needs to be about 2 meters behind him to execute a successful attack. In most cases, the attack goes in a diagonal direction unless it's a pass close to the antenna where Lucas may perform a linear attack. On one hand, it may seem that Lucas limits his opposite attacking options, but on the other hand, this creates a significant space for the outside hitter in the fourth zone. The opposing central blocker must react to any action from Lucas as he is ready to attack in any situation even with an imperfect set. Moreover, if he rushes to the center, the player in the second zone is left with a single or broken block because the opponent's center will shift with Lucas. Statistics also tell us that Lucas could score more attacks per match than any of his team's outside hitters, requiring close monitoring and providing ample space for his fellow attackers. Returning to the initial analysis of attacks from the second zone, even here, despite the presence of a central blocker, the diagonal sometimes gets an opportunity for an attack. Having examined Lucas's attacking tendencies, let's now talk about the technical aspects of this volleyball player. The Brazilian strives not to stray far from the net to avoid interfering with his teammates in handling the ball, leaving limited space for his own approach. To make his life a bit easier, Lucas takes one or two steps back initially. He either slightly moves his right foot back to ensure a more powerful step, or if time allows, he steps back with both the right and left feet to provide additional speed and space during his approach. 
Then, abruptly lifting off the ground, thanks to the powerful step and an expansive arm swing, Lucas soars upward. Notice how the middle blocker raises his hands. He maximizes this element to add extra height to his jump. Given that he doesn't need to rotate his torso as much as outside hitters or opposites often do, he extends his arm behind his head from the top. In the traditional sequence, from the hip, through the body, shoulder, elbow, finishing with the wrist, he forcefully hammers the ball into the opponent's court. In cases where he needs to move, Lucas employs a crossover step, allowing him to quickly and almost without losing speed and momentum reach the required point from where the attack will be executed. As Lucas often attacks from various positions, the orientation of his body depends on the specific situation in the lineup and where he has to run, making it challenging to identify a specific pattern. Everything happens naturally. After a comprehensive analysis of the ATEC, let's move on to the middle blocker's primary responsibilities, blocking. However, there won't be the same meticulous detailing because this aspect is much more straightforward. The Brazilian's height is 209 centimeters and evidently he relies on it. Rarely do you see Lucas rising with the opponent's middle blocker. Typically, he waits until the last moment to make a decision only after receiving the pass. Nevertheless, he presents the most significant challenges to the opponent precisely in the center of the net, where he focuses most of his attention. This often leads to the fact that we don't see a large number of lethal blocks from Lucas because in this mode of action, he doesn't always have time to move his hands to the opponent's side, leaving more space for a successful attack. However, sometimes, even at a lower height and without transferring his hands, he can catch the opponent. Despite not being the most prolific in terms of blocks, this style of play allows Lucas to keep more balls in play, softening the opponent's attacks and providing a chance for his team to score on a successful side out. As I mentioned earlier, Lucas stays with the middle blocker until the last moment. In the case of a perfect reception, the Brazilian immediately raises his hands because, in such a situation, the likelihood of attacking in the center of the net increases. Since he doesn't rise with the setter right away, he has no time for additional hand movements. So, if the ball is sent to the edge of the net in this situation, Lucas will have to move sideways and leap in that direction. But if there is no perfect reception, his hands are immediately lowered to quickly move to the edge of the net and attempt to block the opponent's attacking player. And the final element in the game of the middle blocker of the Brazilian national team, which we haven't discussed yet, is the serve. Over the years, little has changed in Lucas's arsenal, especially when it comes to the choice of position and serving direction. Traditionally, the Brazilian places his cannon in the middle of the court, and most serves will be directed towards the sixth zone, or the boundary between the sixth and first zones. This is where projectiles from the middle blocker of the Brazilian national team most often land. Therefore, the most dangerous serves in his execution are those in the extreme first and fifth zones, where opponents' receivers expect the ball the least. But as you understand, there are absolutely reasonable reasons for that. So, what has changed over all these years? It's the ritual before serving and the ball toss. In his younger years before serving, the Brazilian would juggle the ball alternately with both hands, apparently not letting himself forget his basketball past. After that, he would make one to two rotations of the ball around his axis and, using his right hand, toss the ball in front of his hitting shoulder and execute the serve. And now, at the end of the preparation for the serve, he focuses more on one hand, but the main difference lies in the toss. Now, he moves the ball from the left shoulder to the right, adding a little side spin. Honestly, in practice, this rarely helps him, but sometimes you can still see a curve after the Brazilian's hit. Still, I can't help but admire this volleyball player. For two decades, he has been playing at the highest level and remains a crucial link in any team he's a part of. Yes, he's not unique in this achievement, but athletes with such long and productive careers in the history of volleyball are few. I would be very interested to read your comments about who else can boast such a lengthy and successful career. I also really want to hear your opinion specifically about Lucas. 
How do you feel about this volleyball player? Do you like his game or not? Would he enter your dream team? And of course, don't forget to leave your opinion about this video. How do you like Lucas's biography? How about his technical analysis? Did you enjoy everything in this episode? If yes, be sure to like the video and write who you are looking forward to in the next episode of this series. So you'll need to subscribe to the channel to not miss the analysis of the player you'll ask me about. Also, make sure to check out my Instagram, which I've actively started managing. I would be glad if you subscribe to my page, I really want to reach 1000 subscribers there. Well, as usual, it was Nick with you. Love what you do and you will surely succeed. See you soon. Bye.